Hey, what's up? I hope you're doing super well. So you're never going to believe this in a million years, no matter how much time you spend thinking about it. You remember the Sitzer Burnett trial, the big one, the one that 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 caused it all, the earthquake in the industry. OK, so Josh Sitzer, the main plaintiff of that case. OK, back in 2019, he did a deal and, you know, it was the normal deal where his listing agent split the commission with the buyer agent. He didn't like how that went down. Right. He felt like that was just absolutely wrong. So he went to his neighbor, I believe, who was a lawyer. And that's where the entire class action lawsuit idea was born. And since then, it has manifested into what it is today, a billion dollar settlement. OK, and they're not they're nowhere near done with this. Right. That's just what it is so far. A billion dollar settlement up to this point with with the biggest players in the industry. And industry rule changes and regulations that completely flip the entire landscape of how we do business. And 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 Josh Sitzer, that the main plaintiff for that case, guess what he has done? He has went out and started a company to attempt to replace real estate agents. At least that's what. That's what this headline says. And in reality, that's not what they're doing. They're actually going to be using agents and trying to get agents. They're trying, they're actually, it's going to be hilarious, right? Wait, wait till you hear what they're actually doing here. But, but last week I was scrolling through all the articles that I normally scroll through, looking for new information, breaking news about the industry, housing market, et cetera, as I always do. And I ran across this article and it's not by big publisher, right? TechCrunch is not huge. Um, definitely not in our space, real estate. But as I'm reading through the headlines, I'm looking for something that stands out. I don't know why this one stood out to me and what made me click on it to read it. But after I did, I realized, wow, this is huge. And I was the very first one to break this news on Instagram last week. The article says, after winning a landmark case against real estate agents, this startup aims to replace them with a flat fee, which by the way, has been tried over and over and over and over again, right? There's been so many flat fee and discount brokerages come through. Every single one of them loses money. If they're still in business, they lose a lot of money. And most of them are not in business anymore. They went bankrupt. They, 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 they've they they been completely eliminated because these models don't work. And that's what, <laughs> that's what, that's what they're going to find out as they move forward because they feel like this thing is the wave of the future. <laughs> they feel like this company is the wave of the future. So when I'm, I'm reading this headline, it's not sticking out to me yet that this is the actual plaintiff from the case that has started this company, right? When you read that headline, it just doesn't stick out to you, right? There's a lot of clickbait stuff out there concerning this. I'm like, okay, I don't know what made me click on this particular article to start reading it and realize what is going on. I haven't seen any other, you know, um, publications report on this, although it is huge news in the industry. After I broke the news on Instagram, I saw every real estate media company um, jump on it and create videos and do podcasts, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I haven't really seen this reported anywhere else. I'm sure it will be, will be this week, but this is hilarious. I want to get your thoughts on this. Let's dive right into this article. So um, after winning the landmark case, um, this startup aims to replace place agents with a flat fee. Okay. One of the people who successfully sued the National Association of Realtors to change real estate commissions has co-founded a new real estate startup. It all began in 2017. I said 19, 17, when Josh Schitzer and his wife listed their home for sale in Kansas City. The couple was frustrated by the fact they had to pay 3% commission to the buyer agent. So let me just go back really quickly to the fact that um, the argument that I originally made here, right? He agreed to pay his agent, I'm guessing 6% since they say 3% to the buyer agent, right? So he agreed to pay that 3% to the listing agent, regardless if there's a buyer agent involved or not, right? He was going to pay that 6%, right? If the listing agent represented the buyer or brought the buyer or had the buyer some, some form or fashion, they were going to pay that 6% regardless. So what does it matter if the listing agent decides to split that with the buyer agent so that the buyer can have their own representation? He's literally taken out of his money, not the seller's money, 
his money that the seller agreed to pay, regardless if there's a buyer agent involved or not. Nevertheless, they found a technicality. This is this is the this is the whole thing. They found a technicality in the way that um, commissions are dispersed on the settlement statements and the HUD statements and, and the verbiage. And, and they found this technicality that they're able to use and say, this is illegal. And so, so far they've won a billion dollars over this and the homeowners, the actual victims of, of the said, uh, illegal practice, price fixing, anti antitrust practice only got five or $10 a piece from my calculations. I haven't seen any official, numbers on that that the homeowners actually got five or ten dollars but to my calculations when you take out the typical lawyer fees and then you multiply the rest by how many victims are actually involved you're looking at like five or ten dollars a piece right five or ten dollars a piece for the victims on a billion dollar settlement and so it kind of makes me wonder is josh here not knowing what he's getting into because he obviously does not not knowing what he's getting into feel like this is a way that he can recoup some of that billion dollars he didn't get <laughs> that's what it sounds like to me that's what it sounds like to me so due to um anti-competitive structure of the industry before the lawsuit i as a seller was effectively coerced into paying three percent of my home selling price to the buyer agent in order to achieve a successful sale not true right just in, in my opinion not true you were selling you, you were paying that agent the five, six percent, whatever it was, regardless if there's a buyer agent involved or not. While hiring agents is a choice of many, I don't believe anyone should be bullied into paying uh, undesired services. How is it undesired services? This buyer agent that the, that, the, that the listing agent paid out of what you agreed to pay him, not on top of what you agreed to pay him, um, undesired services, that they, they brought you the buyer and represented them to make sure that they don't sue you later um, due to unfair industry practices. Sitzer shared his frustration with his neighbor who happened to be a lawyer familiar with the subject matter. By 2019, that's where I got the date, 2019, he and the other, other homeowners have filed class action lawsuit. Moore versus Association of Realtors against NAR. They received a, a verdict last year that resulted in settlement early this year that will radically change how uh, how home real estate how home real estate is sold. So it's not going to dramatically change radically change it. I don't I don't think it's going to radically change it. Honestly, um, the National Association of Realtors agreed to pay $418 million in damages to settle a lawsuit. The association also agreed to abolish a participation rule that requires sellers, agents to make an offer of compensation to a buyer brokers. Basically, the participation rule was that you had to put at least a dollar in MLS to even put a, put a property in MLS. And honestly, whenever they did away with that, that I think that was getting close to as far as they should have taken this. I think they could have taken one more step to have better disclosures around the fact that the seller does not have to uh, offer that if they do not want to, but to take it as far as they have taken it and are continuing to take it, I think is a bit much. Between that and other rule changes agreed to the real estate market is expected to be considerably transformed. I wouldn't say I had expectations in the beginning as it was a multi-year battle of ups and downs, but I had enough confidence in my position to commit to taking action. Of course you did. Like you literally found a technicality and you were going to get that five or $10. You were not going to stop until you got that five or $10 um, settlement. And then the whole time you're thinking, I'm going to start, I'm going to start a new company. And I'm going to go right around agents or will you? To take advantage of the new landscape, right? Get this. To take advantage of the new landscape, which is like you, what he's doing, you could do this before, right? It, it And what he's doing is nothing um, advanced. It's, it's nothing groundbreaking. It's, 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 no, it's no innovation. There's zero innovation whatsoever with this. It's actually, a, a, is there a word for like de-innovation? Like, is this going, There's is there a word for going backwards with, with um with imagination and creativity because that's exactly what they've done here sitzer has teamed up with a couple of guys to, to found a startup called landian 
right? <laughs> Land in. This is the name of it, which aims to help home buyers benefit from the rule change that resulted from the lawsuit by offering flat fee real estate agents on demand. Flat fee real estate agents. So they're not looking to replace agents. They're looking to use agents. Or they want agents to come to their platform and literally work for nothing. It's insane. It's not going to happen. The name of Landian blends the two words, land and guardian. What? Well, it's a home. Most of these are houses. So why is it land? And what are you the guardian of? The universe? Okay. That startup is emerging from a self uh, for, from a stealth Thursday with an offering in beta. Um, TechCrunch is the first to report. The site, according to its founders, allows users to import listings from any real estate site and then book a home tour or prepare an offer with a licensed local agent without owing a commission. You, you must have some very low-end real estate agents, right? These have to be like the lowest of the low um, quality, brand new, don't know what they're doing. Why would you want an agent that's working for nothing? Wait to hear the prices. Working for nothing, actually giving you, I, I, are they even giving advice? I don't, even, I don't even think there's any advice being given. But also it says allows users to import listings from any real estate site. So as the customer, do you have to import listings from a site? That sounds like a lot of work for the customer. They can just go on Zillow and just hit show, just show property, just like set up a showing. They can call their agent and say, shut up a showing. They don't have to import anything to anywhere. So this is you, you putting these people to work. Okay, get this. Advances in technology uh, years ago make it easier for home buyers to find properties um, they are interested in looking at or buying. So the model of buyer agents getting up to 3% commission is considered antiquated by many. This is coming from someone who doesn't understand what a buyer agent does. And all you have to do to understand what they do is go buy a house without one. That's all you have to do. Go buy a house without a real estate agent, right? And then you understand the work that, that's involved in it, you know, not to mention not the labor intents of it, number one, but number two, the consultation representation part of it, where you're, you're, you're making sure you're advising and helping these, these buyers through the process to make sure that they don't get got to make sure they get the best deal possible. Somebody looking out for their best interest. That's a professional. If you don't do this every day, which most home buyers don't do it every day, they buy a house every, you know, five, 10 years at the most. They don't know what they're doing and they're totally lost and they need all the help they can get. And agents are well worth their money in gold. So, so, um, and, and furthermore finding the property. Yeah. Like, so, so, so this, this statement, right. Just goes along with that mainstream quote that why do we need real estate agents? We could just find the properties online. Yeah, you can. That's not what you need us for. You need us for everything from that point forward. Yeah, go find everything online and then come to me. I'll help you through it. If you got if if buyers would just spend if, if you just if you want to pick out five or ten homes, you go set just just go in and setting up those showings. Just go in and setting them up. You'll lose your mind. <laughs> Not to mention actually going through the process of getting all the the information, you know, getting there, um, deciding, trying to trying to decide like like what to offer, what the term should be, how to negotiate the best deal, right? Making sure we hit all the de deadlines of the contract on and on and on. And it, it, the list goes on and on and on. But most people just think, oh, all, all buyer agents do is just show them property. Just, I mean, I mean, I mean, find them a house. What are you agents for? We can just find the house on our own. Okay. Go find the house on your own and go pursue buying it without an agent. Come back to me and tell me how that worked out for you. So advances in technology years ago made it to where, what do we need buyer agents for? Some buyers have argued that it's unfair to pay such a large commission to an agent when they did most of the legwork. Yeah, you did most of the legwork. And, but that the legwork is not what you're hiring the real estate agent for, right? It's all the work after you found the property. Okay, get this. Here's the model. Buyers have an option to pay a la carte for Landian's offering. $49 for each home tour. What? What agent is going to go show a home for $49 a and Landian's taking a cut of that. So what do you do? What are you showing the property for 20 bucks, 30 bucks? I don't know, but like gas costs more than that. 
much less year, an hour of your time, depending on where the home is. This is insane. This is not going to work. And and uh, and $199 for an offer prep session. What is an offer prep session, right? And are we representing this or writing the offer up as it's a, a buyer by owner, like they're representing themselves? Can we consult them? Where's the liability in this? This, this, this sounds like this sounds like an awful. This sounds like an awful bit of uh, amount of liability to me. Number one. Number two. I have to think. This sounds kind of price fixish. <laughs> like forty nine dollars flat fee. Is that negotiable, or are you setting this price? Is this is this a fixed price? Are you breaking price fixing laws? Is Landian um subject to illegal price fixing uh <laughs> actions here? Like I, I I'm just. I'm just asking. I'm just wondering, is this uh, could this potentially be a price fixing situation? Because it sure sounds like it. If they want more hand holding, they can cough up. They can cough up. They're using the term cough up like they can just cough it up. Right. What if they don't have it? I'll oh, just cough it up. A flat fee of $17.99, which includes up to five home tours and two offer prep sessions. Okay, so 1700 five tours. So five tours at 49, that's 250. And then 199 per per offer prep session, that's 400. So 400 plus 250 is a 650. How how did they how do they go from 650 if you buy them all just a la carte to 1799 includes up to five home tours? um and two offer prep sessions maybe there's something i'm missing maybe a home maybe they mean by home tour is like seeing a bunch of homes five different days I, I i don't know i don't know that that sounds a little wild right there with additional services available a la carte basis so what else are they offering we don't know it won't tell us it's very elusive but they only have to pay that upon closing oh so even when you're as an agent, right, as an agent, you're going to team up with Landy and go show a home for forty nine dollars and you don't even get paid unless there's a closing. That's that's crazy. What agent is going to do that? So if you don't end up buying a house through Landy and you commit to that agreement, OK, buying a house through Landy. So I'm wondering what that means by through Landy. Is Landy now going after the buyer agent commission? Like what, what's going on here? And you commit to that agreement. What agreement? What agreement? You don't. There's a lot of stuff that I'm. I'm not. I'm not picking up here. Like there's a lot of stuff between the lines we ain't seeing. I think there's a lot of shady stuff happening. Honestly, with this, this sounds real shady. With Landy and home buyers are protected from the new reality uh, of paying exorbitant commissions out of pocket that eat into their closing costs. No, it doesn't. It's been figured into the price. It doesn't need any of the closing costs at all. Uh, I see what you're saying. Now that they have to pay it, it's kind of part of the closing costs, and you want to protect them of that. They don't need an agent, somebody to just find houses for them, right? Um, this guy previously founded uh, FinTech Company Zero, which was acquired by Avan in 21. People don't need to use buyer agent in the same way. You have no idea what people need, sir. <laughs> like, and I'm just saying, go try it on your own. The cream's going to come to the top, guys. This is going to be the largest social experiment that we've ever seen when it comes to real estate, right? This is this is that's what this is going to be. A lot of industry encumbrance, such as Redfin and Zillow, are not incentivized to change their pricing model because the Zillow and Redfins and this sort of old guard real estate tech companies have thrived and grown in a world where buyer agents get three percent. They're not leading the change here. Um. It's a new wave of startups like Landian that we expect to lead the change. Landian's business model, from what I can tell, outside of whatever shady stuff you're not telling me, is not even not different or anything new. It's actually very, very extremely antiquated. It's it's like it's like the oldest model in the book. Um, like. It, <laughs> uh, my bet is that following the NAR settlement, most agents will convert to relying solely on the transactional model based on speculation and higher fees to incorporate the Lanny and flat feed model. So he thinks that most agents will convert from relying on that transitional model, right? Which is not what agents do. They, they rely on a relationship based model. 
on speculation and high fees and to incorporate the landing and flat fee model. He literally, this guy thinks that most agents are going to, are going to convert to incorporating the landing and flat fee model and literally working for nothing. No, no, no. They'll just go get a different job. See, that's what you don't get. That's what you don't get. Agents aren't just going to say, okay, well, all I can make is $2 a day. No, they'll just go get another job. They'll quit real estate and go, go do something that actually makes money. That's why prices are never going to go this low and why your company is going to go bankrupt. I'll call it right now. Land in these business models outside of whatever shady stuff I can't see. Like if there's some, there's some other stream of revenue that I'm not seeing here or don't know about, you will not make it. You'll have, and, and not only if you drastically increased your prices, you still wouldn't make it. You still wouldn't make it. You'd have to increase your prices to a good two to 3% to survive. And that's why real estate prices are two to 3% and will continue to be two to 3%. And companies like yours will um, vanish. They haven't raised any comp any money yet. They're operating on friends and family money. They're going to do a seed round, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, there it is, guys. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments on this. This is absolutely insane. No matter how much I think about it, it just continues to blow my mind. Wednesday, I'm going live. I'm going to share with you the shocking cr truth. Why 99% of realtors sabotage their own success, right? Why 99% of agents, realtors sabotage their own success. It's going to be Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern. Let's get it. We'll see you soon. Have a great day.